This is your weekly budget brief from National Priorities Project. I'm Mattia Kramer. This election season, we've been hearing all about how this country has some big problems. We've been hearing about the sour economy, mountains of student debt, rising health care costs. It hasn't exactly been a barrage of good news. But today's your lucky day. I come with happy news. It's about Social Security, a program that millions of Americans rely on. You see, Social Security is an earned benefit program, meaning that Americans pay into the program during all of their working years, and then when they retire, they receive a monthly check to help them make ends meet during retirement. A number of years back, President George W. Bush proposed a plan to privatize Social Security. That was not a popular idea, but what it's done is left a lingering notion that the program faces an urgent crisis and needs a major overhaul. Well, wrong and wrong. Here are the facts. Social Security does not face an urgent crisis. With no changes, it can pay all scheduled benefits through the year 2033. And after that, it can pay about 75% of all benefits through the year 2086. And all of that was confirmed in a recent report released by the nonpartisan Congressional Budget Office earlier this month. So if Social Security can pay all scheduled benefits through the year 2033, and then it runs into some problems, we've got a little time to come up with our solution. But we've still got to come up with a solution, right? Well, there's more good news there. A couple administrative changes would add many decades to the full financial solvency of Social Security. For example, lawmakers can change or adjust the retirement benefits formula so that wealthy retirees receive smaller cash payments. And they can gradually add a few months to the retirement age. And they can also raise what's called the taxable maximum. Right now, workers pay Social Security taxes on their first $110,000 of wage income. But lawmakers could raise that maximum in order to bring in new revenues for the program. Now, you might say that in this political climate, even these kinds of simple solutions may be out of reach of Washington. But more good news here. This is one of the few things that President Obama and Governor Romney agree on. They both said that these kinds of small administrative changes are the way to go to securing the future of one of America's most popular programs. Maybe next week you and I should solve the economic crisis. Join me then. Thank you.